Okay, so promoting active living and active lifestyles. Next, we have an opportunity to have a community update. Supervisor Joan Hartman is joining us today. Supervisor Hartman began her career in the academic world, serving as director of the public policy program at the Claremont Graduate School, assistant professor of environmental studies and government at Overling College, and later as an adjunct professor of environmental studies at USC. So please welcome Supervisor Hartman for the update. It is so good to be back. I feel like I'm among my people. Uh, and one reason is that uh, everyone in here is really devoted to the health and well-being of the young people in our community. And doing it in a way, um, it, there's people who work in the kitchens, there's people who work in the classroom, there's people after school, um, administrators. It brings so many different kinds of people together. So the whole, whole school is the classroom to learn skills for health and well-being. Our function is really to inoculate young people against a lot of pernicious influences that they're facing in our modern world. Sugary sodas, fast food, social media, nicotine and vapes. I just marked my ballot and said, yes, <laughs> we, we should outlaw. <laughs> uh, and other drugs, especially fentanyl right now. So there's, there's lots of things that are tempting young people away from a healthy lifestyle. Uh, but you people in this room are really my heroes because you're on the front lines trying to educate young people about what they can do to have productive, healthy lives. And I always get really inspired by the things I hear, um, and especially the 100 Mile Club. In my own life, when I was 10, 11, my, there was a parental illness, a lot of stress on the family, and, and I started running with my dog at night uh, on the streets in my neighborhood. And uh, it did, it took, it took the heavy thoughts off my brain like the, the young girl said. And it's been a lifelong commitment. I, I, I've been uh, 50 some years now running and walking. And it's, it's something that has so many benefits. When, when I started doing this, uh, girls had to play half-court basketball, and the longest you could run was a 600-yard run, uh, one and a half times around the track. So it was a really different era, and it's not when people were, were really running. But I think there's something in each of us that, that longs for and goes towards what's, what's healthy and what we need. And uh, people have studied evolutionarily women gathering hunting and gathering societies, women averaged about six miles a day, and men about, as, as hunters, about eight miles a day. So in our own evolutionary history, we are meant to move. And if we don't, I think there's all kinds of uh, negative things that, that we experience as a result. So as a, a county supervisor, my signature work is trying to create trails, paths, parks, recreational activities, so that people can be more active. One of my proudest accomplishments is working with Alma Hernandez in my office. Our number one priority was the Santa Maria River Trail along the levee. This has been in people's minds for decades. It was in five different community plans uh, that this trail should be built. But there was huge resistance among the agricultural interests adjacent to the trail. And uh, it wasn't just local, it went all the way up to the state. But we got a feasibility study and we got five votes uh, uh, on the Board of Supervisors to allocate $1.5 million to this trail. It'll be the longest uh, Class A bikeway in our county. It will link Santa Maria in many ways, uh, an, a hugely underserved community. It has the highest, third highest um, bike accident rate and fatality rate in the state. Uh, with Guadalupe, many of the people in Santa Maria have never been to the beach, never seen the dunes. And it'll link Guadalupe to Santa Maria. 
So, um, so the work is underway on this, doing the surveying and the environmental analysis and getting the proper permits from the Army Corps of Engineers. But um, this project is going to happen. And I'm, I'm very, very excited about it. Because if you're going to have a 100-mile club, it's, it's more enticing if you have really interesting places to go. And so the Santa Maria Trail is, is going to be one of those. Um, just a few weekends ago, we're working on the Santa Inez um, Refugio Trail by the high school. In 2015, a young woman, 15 years old, uh, day before her 16th birthday, was killed at the intersection, hit by a car, 246 in Rufufio. So we're going to dedicate this trail to her. But we've been working two weekends with the Bucket Brigade and with volunteers here in our community to build uh, a demonstration. And the trail is now going to go from 246 all the way up um, almost to Baseline, Samantha Boulevard. And then we're going to take it further. But... Um, we, we really need to reclaim rights of ways. And in many areas, sidewalks are really expensive, especially rural areas like, like the Santa Ynez Valley. So one of the things we're working is, how do we reclaim? Many people have encroached upon the right of ways with trees, landscaping, fencing. So we have to very carefully work with them to push that back and reclaim. In the area uh, on Refugio that I've spoken about, one side is for pedestrians and cyclists. The other is for equestrians. This used to be a very much an equestrian community. And if you get to South Rufufio, there's tremendous, um, you can get up into the, into the mountains and it's, it's quite Camino Cielo. It's quite beautiful. Uh, so you can bike or, or ride. So we're trying to open it up. We have um, um, many other projects that are underway and I'll just list them for you quickly. Uh, we've got, um, we're working on a through trail along the Santa Inez River. Um, the right-of-way exists, Buellton at the uh, Botanic Garden, all the way uh, to the 101. And we're working uh, with landowners, and, and we're hoping to get all the way to Alisal, and that's where the Class 1 bikeway starts. So um, that's a longer project, but it's, we're moving towards it. We're working on the Bodger Trail uh, just outside Lompoc, where there's quite a lot of community interest, and we're trying to bring the right people together uh, to make that happen. Um, I don't know how many of you have been to Halama Beach, but uh, there you, you can walk out on the beach and walk back uh, if the tide doesn't get you. But we're, we're now uh, studying how to put a loop trail so you can get up on the bluff and then down stairways and, and make a big circle, uh, which is much more interesting than just an out and back. We're also working on something called uh, the countywide cross-jurisdiction recreational master plan. Uh, so we're working with cities, we're working across our county to identify what resources we have, what kind of shape they're in, what people want more than what we already have. And, and it's really been a fascinating effort. Uh, and it'll be done at the end of 2023. But um, we, we need a lot more recreation and activities for young people. One, one thing that was really heartbreaking to me, Alma and I were in Lompoc and a woman came up. She teaches preschool full time. She has four sons, and she can't afford the uniforms and the fees for them to participate in recreation programs. So we're very eager to ensure that the recreation master plan, as well as any foundations, that we elevate this issue so that being engaged in sports and activities is something that uh, everybody can do. It doesn't depend on income. Although that's one reason why I really like trails is it doesn't take much to get out and go walking or be a member of that 100-mile club. So um, I think if we don't get moving, we find ourselves less cheerful. One in five experiencing mental health issue at any one time in our country. It, it distorts signals about hunger and food. It's harder to sleep soundly. Um, it makes it more difficult to concentrate and do our schoolwork. So, um, so active living is really a focus 
If you start there, so many other things will come into focus, come into place. And so I'm doing my bit on the land use and county effort, and uh, I'm so happy to be here today and hear about all the things that you're doing. Thank you. Build it, they will come. Thank you, Supervisor Hartman, for joining us today and providing such really exciting updates. We appreciate your commitment to health initiatives and wellness programs across our communities.